Hey, what's up? This is Seth Green, and you are listening to Somewhere in Vegas with Mark, and I am so hot, I would desperately like a glass of water. Please, please, give me some water. This is Cindy Preston, and I'm with Mark on Somewhere in Vegas. Hi, this is Melissa Peterman from CMT's The Singing Bee and the television show Reba. And I have to tell you, I just have to get it off my chest, I love Somewhere in Vegas with Mark. Hi there. This is Faith Roscoe from General Hospital. You're listening to Mark on Somewhere in Vegas. And you better watch out. We know how to find you if you're not listening. Hi, this is Shannon Egan from Whippet. And I love Somewhere in Vegas with Mark. Hey, this is Lee Allen Baker with Somewhere in Vegas. Talking with Mark with a Q. This is Courtney Cronin. You're listening to Somewhere in Vegas with your host, Mark. And I would make sure to listen every week because he's a sure bet. Hey, this is the money man. Any money, I got two tickets to paradise in this. You know what? It's somewhere in Vegas. And what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Hi, this is Crystal Kale, and I love Somewhere in Vegas with Mark. Hi, this is Terry Nunn from Berlin, and you're listening to Mark Somewhere in Vegas. Hi, this is Miracle Lori from Joss Whedon's Dollhouse. There are three flowers in a vase, and I'm listening to Somewhere in Vegas with Mark. Hi, this is Erin Hill, and you are listening to Mark on Blog Talk Radio and Somewhere in Vegas. Mark is a great guy. Hi, this is Sean Pulaski. I'm still trying to figure out Mark Pico's sexuality, but I know you're listening to Somewhere Live in Vegas. Here you go, Mark. I, I'm sorry. I thought you were he, she. I'm sorry. I, 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 get out of the tent. Let's get out of here. Hey, this is Lance and Anna from Free Radio and... Anna? And you're listening to Somewhere in Vegas. Yes. My favorite. favorite. My fa- you know, that's, that's usually what happens with me. I go to Vegas and I get lost, and so I end up somewhere in Vegas. Somewhere in Vegas. But okay. I just don't know where it is. Not quite sure. Yeah, word. Get ready. It's going to be hot. It's in Vegas. Check out Mark. Be there or be square. My guest at this time is an award-winning director, he, he put out uh, Ninja and Movable Heart. You guys can now watch on Tubi here in the United States for free if you guys just download the Tubi app. So if you want to see some of his older, older work, please do so. But right now, his current movie is Rage, which is coming out February the 23rd on most outlets here in the United States. Won Best Feature in the L.A. Film Fest and the Cream Poems Film Fest. And he's also, uh, our guest at this time, has actually won Best Director at the Montreal Film Festival. John uh, Bellez is on with us right now. How you doing, John? Good. How are you? Good. Are you, are you out of Australia right now, or? It's Australia. It's it's ten o'clock in the morning here. <laughs> yeah. How how's everything going down on down there? Oh, it's a beautiful sunny day. Uh, we've we've uh, managed our COVID situation after 180 days of lockdown, um, hard lockdown, so curfews and things like that. So we've come out of it now on the much better end. But yeah, we're we're sun is shining. It's a beautiful day. Uh, how, by the way, how what, what's the temperature right right now down there? Well, in Celsius, it's thirty four. So I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit. <laughs> um, hmm, I think where's the thirty? Yeah. Alexa, what's thirty four degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? Thirty four degrees Celsius is ninety three point two degrees Fahrenheit. Ninety three. There you go. Beautiful day. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 way warmer than it is here, but it's actually 63 here, and, and there's some some places in the United States that are actually minus 10, minus 20 Fahrenheit right now. So it goes to show you what the what the Swift is up here. So oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, very diverse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, you know, let's let's kind of dig into it first of all. Um, you know, how was it on set? How was it working with the cast that you uh, got for this movie? Well, uh, look, honestly, the cast, most of them were just our friends, you know, they were, it was just rocking up to set every day and having a really good time with your friends. It was friends that I picked very carefully because, uh, they had to act, obviously they had to know how to be (laughs) good actors. Um, so I always put that first before casting a friend or something like that. They have to be good for, they have to be, you have to be a good actor first and a friend second basically for this film. Um, but yeah, look, I, it was a very, very easy casting session uh, because we we just knew everyone. We've all worked together on our short films prior to this, uh, you know. So it was ninety percent a reunion of most of the cast and crew. Uh, Richard Norton, I never worked with 
prior. Uh, no, actually, I did. I, I worked with him on a short film prior to this, but never in a feature film capacity. And um, Toddy Goldsmith, I've never worked with before either. And they were they were just amazing to watch. So I was actually I was actually their you know, a student uh, watching them do their craft and their art. I was just so blown away. You know, it was like that that saying where it goes um, uh, directing is. 90% casting on casting is 90% directing. I, I never really understood that till I actually saw, you know, these guys on set because I'm like, I didn't have to do a, I didn't have to do a goddamn thing. Uh, you just did, you just do your thing. I, I sat back at one stage and I was like, oh, I'm watching the show. I'm watching a film here. And I'm like, sometimes I forgot to yell cut because I just like, Oh, keep going. I, I want this to keep going. But it was just amazing experience to have those two, um, you know, Toddy and Richard on set and, yeah, um, Matt was is a great friend of mine. Haley, I've worked with on a, on a on a few short films as well, and everyone else. You know, they were either um, fighters or background people in my action short films, or just people that I've worked with, you know, previously. There was it was just a bunch of mates coming together making a film. I mean, that has to have an advantage to you in terms of shooting because you know you get into similar mindsets and you know how 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 to utilize a person. The best that they can, especially on the crew. And mm -hmm. you know, how was it for you to film? And but roughly, how many days did it take you to shoot the uh, shoot the movie? So it's a two and a half hour film, and uh, we we um, shot it in twenty two days. Well, that's unbelievable. <laughs> twenty two days, but that's because obviously um, a lot of the cast and crew did have have evolved with me through our short films, um, and that they kind of saw the. The, the passion and the caliber and the energy and the excitement, you know, just keep getting raised and raised with every project. So we all came into it with the mindset of, well, we, we can't stuff this up. Like we have to give this a hundred percent. So even though we all knew each other, we, we treated it very professionally. So coming, coming on set, I was coming on set to actors ready to work and ready to, to really perfect their craft. But at the same time in between, you know, in between the setups and the cuts, we were just, we were just having a ball. <laughs> so that it was easy for me to direct, very easy. Coming off of that, I mean, you know, looking at the acting and, and watching what they were capable of, of in front of the camera, were you surprised at some of the performances? I was, well, to start off with, I was very surprised by Matt because I, I mean, I, I saw something in him just from the short film, so I knew I knew that he had this uh, quality to him that he was hiding, and and he never had a chance to really explore. So I, I was quite surprised and taken aback by some of the dramatic moments that Matt would have to exhale out of his out of himself and just really become vulnerable on on screen, which is which is a hard thing to do. Um, so that that was surprising to me. Haley surprised me very, very much because I knew she was a great actress, but I didn't know to what degree or caliber she can really dive deeper and deeper and deeper into that, um, you know, that, that character of despair and, and, and trauma. And what was really shocking to me to see and, and scary at some times was to see this beautiful, bubbly young woman smile, interact, you know, having coffee with the crew and then come action, that, that switch of being Haley, the bubbly, amazing, gorgeous, outgoing, lively person to this dark, quiet, silent person suffering from post-traumatic stress. You know, it, was, it was scary to see, but also very admirable because I'm like, that's an actress who knows how to switch. And it's very, very rare to see that. And having said that, Haley's scenes i got to be honest with you, two takes minimum. Uh, sorry, two takes maximum. Two takes maximum on her scenes because she she nailed it almost every every time, first go. So directing her was a joy. Yeah, I mean, just watching the trailer, you can kind of see the the kind of high caliber acting that is in the in, in the in the movie and and some of the things that they have to go through in terms of you know, their characters. I mean, it's, it's just unbelievable to think that, you know, you could be able to turn that, that, that off and on like that mm. as well. Like you said, you said, it's a rare thing that, you know, somebody could ever do. So uh, hopefully she's, she can get some accolades uh, going on with this movie once it comes out. I hope so. I hope so. She, she really deserves it. And uh, she's quite humble about it as well. She's very humble about it, which, 
really frustrates me because I'm like, you should be celebrating this. You should be on top of the world. She's like, oh, well, we'll just see what it is. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You should be, you should be, you know, shouting on, on the roof, dancing. You know, you, what you've achieved is, is amazing. So I don't think it's quite hit her yet that she's got a feature film coming out <laughs> released globally. So I think when it does, um, she'll, she'll definitely uh, let it sink in a bit more. Uh, what kind of drew you to the project in the, um, in the, in the script? Well, I mean, I wrote the treatment in 2013, between 2011, 2013. I just, I just wrote a, um, a 10 page treatment about this story. And um, a lot of it was inspired by, there was a, a, a home invasion in Connecticut at some st- uh, at some point. It was in the early, early 2010s, I think, um, where a family, it was a be- this beautiful family, I uh, got, got this, um, their home invaded by two escaped convicts. It's an HBO special on it. And yeah, that, that, that crime really just really resonated with me because I'm like, that's, that's, that's my worst fear. You know, someone coming in and ruining your life and, and they've ruined this beautiful family's life. And I really, that really sunk into me. I was watching a lot of true crime shows at that stage. And um, yeah, I just started writing it. I'm like, oh, well, you know, what can that do to, to someone? What would that do to a couple? Because, you know, how do you, how do you, go on from that and basically I, I i shelved it i shelved it for a good seven years because i was in my early 20s I, I didn't know anything about marriage i didn't know anything about you know the crumbling of a relationship i was i wasn't mature enough to tackle the subjects in in the story and just on a side note when everyone asked me what kind of film this is the themes i always tell them look this isn't this is an adult film and they're like, oh, oh, you know, adult film. Like, no, 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 no. This is a this is an adult film for that, that deals with adult themes and 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 topics. And you know, you, you got to come into it with a certain amount of life experience. And just going back, you know, early twenties, I don't, I didn't have any any understanding or all the maturity to understand it. So I had to catch up to myself a bit. And then this great opportunity through Matt Theo came along, um, where he he said, well, what do you want to do? I'll I'll I'll, I'll finance it. Um, the catches on the lead. And I'm like, that's a given. That's not, that's not an issue because I know I know what you can do. And then I just pulled out three scripts. Um, three, uh, th- uh, picked, I pulled out two scripts and a treatment. Well, one of the treatment was Rage. And uh, I had a sci-fi one and an action one. And I go, laid them out on the table. I'm like, which one do you want? And he picked <laughs> he picked the hardest one. He picked the, the Australian drama. <laughs> and I'm like, damn it. Why don't you pick the action, you know? But I'm glad he did because he was able to showcase his, his range. You know, so... He made the right choice. So then it was a process of finding a writer because I'm not a writer by any means, um, nor will I ever claim to be one or even try to be one because that's a whole different discipline. So I put up a post on Stage 32 uh, one night. Uh, it's like an online forum for writers and people like that in the industry. And overnight, I, I got about you know, 308, 310 emails saying I'm the right person for this job from all over the world. And, uh, you know, here, here's my sample script. So I had to spend the next three months reading through sample scripts and resumes and shortlisting. And, you know, it was such a tiresome experience, a very, very tedious thing to do because I actually read every single script that was offered as a sample. But, yeah, Michael Cosby, I then put his name in the, in the hat. And as soon as I saw his writing and he previous feature film won – at the Oscar Film Festival, and it got made into an Australian film, which was also dark and gritty and very, had very similar themes, and it was directed by uh, another Australian here. And I'm like, well, there's this too much of a coincidence not to at least get back to this guy. And we started chatting, and he really understood the, the neo-noir um, uh, mix of genres here. And, and he just took it away, and he really made it his own. So he took my treatment, he took the best bits of that, but then he went away and he really made it his own story. He put in characters and twists and plot lines and threads that I didn't even think about. So he, he took my idea and just, you know, gave it an arm, gave it legs, he just gave it, gave it a, a whole breath of life. And he was someone that I really, really, really enjoyed collaborating with. He's just, just such a smart, smart individual. Uh, he, he just knows everything about story and screenwriting he's just got such great instinct for this kind of stuff that you know he's definitely one to watch out for um but yeah just take it from then and then obviously the whole you know pre-production process which i quite enjoy yeah it, it was just a snowball effect from that so you know three months of writing another three months of pre-production and then 22 days of shooting 
And I think I cut the film together maybe in about three, four weeks. And then 